Welcome to ES310 Lesson 27. Today we will be looking at a couple more examples of work energy methods so that you can gain more experience with these types of problems. If you want to review this material, you can find it in Hibbler's Dynamics textbook, Chapter 18, Section 4, or in Lesson 26 of this series. By way of review, the principle of work energy says that the initial kinetic energy plus the work done on the system is equal to the final kinetic energy. The kinetic energy for a rigid body can have up to two terms per body in the system. The first term is the translational kinetic energy, which is one half of the mass times the velocity of the center of mass of the rigid body squared. The rotational kinetic energy is one half of Ig, which is the moment of inertia around the center of mass times omega squared. You could also write this rotational kinetic energy as one half IIC omega squared, where IIC is the moment of inertia around the instantaneous center of zero velocity of a, or a point that has zero velocity. The generalized work for a rigid body is equal to the integral of the force times the distance parallel to that force. For a constant force, this simplifies to the force times the distance parallel to the force, or F times S times the cosine of theta, while theta is the angle between the force and the distance. If we have gravity, then the work is equal to the weight of the object times the vertical displacement of the object, and is negative if we move up and positive if we move down. The work due to the spring is one half k times s two squared minus s one squared, where s two is the final stretch and s one is the initial stretch. We can also have a work due to a couple moment or an apply externally applied moment to the system, which is equal to the moment itself times the change in angular position of the object. The general procedure for these types of problems is to write the kinetic energy to use kinematics to relate the variables in that kinetic energy, to write the work expression, and then to use the work energy a principle to solve the problem. So this is the first example we're going to look at. We have a load sitting on an L bracket that is connected to the wall through parallel links. A moment is applied to the upper link of, of 900 foot-pounds that causes the L bracket to move upwards along a curved path. So the box itself is ha moving through curvilinear motion but only is only translating. It, the box itself is not rotating. So the kinetic energy for this system, since all of the links in the L bracket have no mass and therefore have no kinetic energy, the kinetic energy of the system then is only is one half mass of the box times the velocity of the center of mass of the box squared. So we only have translation in this system. The work done on this box has two terms. Right? So there is the work done against gravity. So we are moving up, gravity pulls down, so we have negative weight of the box times h, which is the distance that the box moves from the horizontal up to whatever position it ends up as, that's h. And then we also have work done by the moment, which in this case the moment and the angle are in the same direction, so it's a positive work is equal to the moment times theta. We now need to relate h and theta so that we only have one unknown in this equation. If we look at the triangle that's formed as this box moves, we have the hypotenuse of that triangle equal to 4 feet, which is the length of the link. This is theta, and this is h. So the relationship between theta and h is equal to the fact that h is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of theta. So plugging that in over here, we get the work is equal to the negative weight times 4 sine of theta plus m theta. So our work energy expression then says that the initial kinetic energy plus the work from 1 to 2 is equal to the final kinetic energy. The system starts at rest, so the initial kinetic energy is 0. The work is negative 200 pounds 
times 4 sine of theta changes to 60, so sine of 60, plus the moment 900 times theta, but this theta needs to be in, so theta is 60, but it needs to be in radians to fit it to go into this equation. 60 degrees converted to radians, we multiply by 2 pi, we divide by 360, and we get 1.0472 radians. So this is 900 times 1.0472 is equal to 1 half the mass of the box is 200 pounds divided by 32.2 times the, cent the velocity of the center of mass. Solve this for Vg, we get 8.966. What we're looking for is the angular velocity of the links A, A B, and C, D. So if the box is moving, this point out here, is moving at 8.966, then this point here at C is also moving at 8.966, right? Because this thing is just translating. It's moving along a different curve, but the speed is the same. And so then we can find omega because the velocity is equal to omega times r. And so omega is equal to the velocity, 8.966, divided by the radius, which is 4. So we get 2.24 radians per second. So method again, we write the kinetic energy. If needed, we relate all of the terms in the kinetic energy using kinematics. We write the work. We relate the terms in the work. We write the principle of, of work energy, plug everything in, solve for our unknown, and then work through until we get the actual unknown. So let's take a look at a, at a yo-yo. The yo-yo has a weight. That weight acts as its center of mass. I'm going to call this center of mass G instead of O to avoid confusion. The hand is stationary, so this point right here is an instantaneous center of zero velocity. It's not moving. And that is the only force that's acting. The rope pulls up at that instantaneous center of zero velocity. And the, ro the, the yo-yo is going to drop some distance d. And we are supposed to find, if it's dropped from rest, how far must it go, so what is d, to attain an angular velocity of omega equal to 70 radians per second. We're, neg we're neglecting the mass of the string and assuming that the radius um, that it's wound around has, is at, averages at 0.02 feet. So we start by writing the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy for this yo-yo has a translational part because the center of mass is moving down and a rotational bar part because the yo-yo is rotating. So we have 1 half m vg squared plus 1 half i g omega squared. So now we need to find i g and relate omega and vg. So i g which is the moment of inertia around the center, is related to this k, which they said, oh, we changed o to g. So is equal to mass times kg squared. So the mass is 0.3 divided by 32.2, and kg is 0.06 squared, which gives us a very small number of 3.4 times 10 to the negative 5. So that's IG. Now how do we relate VG to omega? Well, we have a point of zero velocity, so VG is equal to VIC plus omega crossed with RGIC. These are all vectors. VIC is zero, so this is equal to omega K crossed with from g the position of g relative to the initial the point of zero velocity is negative r so negative r i hat so 
k positive k crossed into negative i gives us negative j, so omega r in the negative j direction, which is what we expect since it's moving downwards. All right, so v is equal to omega r, so we can write our t expression then as one half of the mass of 0.3 over 32.2 times omega squared, r squared is 0.02 squared, plus one half of 3.4 e negative 5 times omega squared. So our only unknown in this expression is omega squared. We can solve this, we get 1.9 times 10 to the negative 5 omega squared. All right, now let's look at the work expression. The work, the only force here that's doing work is equal is the weight, since the tension in the rope does no work since we don't move, that point doesn't move. So the work is going to equal the weight times the distance. It's positive since we're moving downward. Our principle of work energy says that T1 plus the work is equal to T2. There is no T1. So WD is equal to 1.9 e negative 5 omega squared. Omega is 70, so this is 1.9 e negative 5 times 70 squared is equal to the weight, so 0.3 times D. We solve for D and we get 0.3043 feet. So once again, we wrote our kinetic energy. We related the variables in the kinetic energy through our kinematics. We wrote our work. We wrote our principle of work energy, and we solved for our unknown. This final example is slightly more complicated because it involves many more bodies than the examples we've seen so far. So what we have are two gears that are inside a stationary gear. So the velocity of C is equal to zero. And we have a bar connecting those two gears, and a moment is it applied to that bar. So you, you, you can picture this as that moment's applied, this point's going to move down, that point's going to move up, and that's going to cause this, this gear to turn this way, and this gear to turn this way. So each of these two gears is going to have a translational and a rotational kinetic energy, and the bar itself is going to have a rotational kinetic energy because its center is a center of zero velocity, right? Because these two velocities are going to be equal. We connect them using similar triangles. This point um, is the center of zero velocity. So we'll write our kinetic energy then as the kinetic energy of the two gears. Those two gears are going to be the same. Right? So we don't have to write out four terms, we're just going to multiply the two terms by two. So then we have one half the mass of a gear times the velocity of the center of mass of a gear, which would be point A or B, it doesn't matter, plus one half of the moment of inertia of the gear times omega of the gear squared. Then we also have the rotation of the bar, so one half of I for the bar, which I'm going to call AB, times omega of AB squared. That's our kinetic energy. Now we need to use kin kinematics to relate the variables in here. And we can also write our expressions for the moments of inertia. So starting with the moments of inertia, we're told that the gear acts like a thin disk. So a thin disk has a moment of inertia of one half of the mass times the radius squared. And a slender rod has a moment of inertia around its center of one twelfth the mass of the rod times the length of the rod squared. So those two expressions are going to be plugged in here. They're known. We know the mass and we know the distances. All right, so now we need to relate the velocity of the gear, the center of the gear, to the rotation of the center of the gear. 
and to the rotation of the, the bar. So if we look at the gear itself first, this point, the point on the outside of the gears, is equal to zero. And so we can write that the, f the velocity of the center of the gear is equal to the velocity of the, s the instantaneous center of zero velocity plus omega crossed with r of the gear. So this is zero, which is equal to then the omega k hat crossed with r of the center measured from the instantaneous center. So for a, that is equal to 0.15 in the positive i hat direction, right? This is r. Um, the omega we drew on this picture is negative. So that gives us a negative k hat crossed into a positive i hat gives us a negative j omega times 0.15 negative j, which corresponds to a velocity pointing down. If we did it over on the other gear, the omega would have been positive, the r would have been negative, and we would have gotten a positive velocity. So that's our relationship between vg and omega of the gear. Now what's our relationship between vg and the omega of the bar? So if we look at this, the bar also has an instantaneous center of zero velocity at its center. So we have the velocity of point A, which is equal to VG, which is what we've been calling it. All right, so the velocity of point G A is equal to the velocity of the, the point of zero velocity plus omega AB crossed with R, as measured from IC. So this is zero again. So we get this is equal to omega AB k hat, which as we have it drawn here is positive, crossed with, we're going from IC to A, so negative 0.2, half the length of the bar, I hat. So this gives us a positive K crossed into the negative I, gives us a negative J, which agrees with the direction of the velocity. So this is 0.2 omega AB J hat. All right, so now we have all of the velocities omegas related. We're given information about omega AB, so we probably want to write everything in terms of omega AB. So velocity is written in terms of omega AB already. If we look at this expression, then we have 0.2 omega AB is equal to 0.15 omega G, or omega G is equal to 0.2 divided by 0.15. All right, so then we can plug all of that information up here, along with the numbers that go with the IG and the IAB, and we can write that kinetic energy if once you've simplified it as 0.14 omega a b squared. The work is being done by this moment. We're told that we're in the horizontal plane, so gravity is into the plane, so gravity is not doing any work. So the work then is equal to the moment times theta, the number of revolutions, and that is what we're trying to find, is the number of revolutions that the bar must rotate. So kinetic energy initial plus the work is equal to kinetic energy final. Initially, this is at zero. So we have m theta is equal to 0.14 omega AB squared, where they tell us omega AB is 20, 20 so 0.14 times 20 squared. This m is equal to 10, so this is 10 theta is equal to that which tells us then that theta is equal to 5.6. Units on that is radians. We're asked for revolutions. So we're going to multiply, divide by 2 pi radians because 1 revolution is 2 pi radians. This then is equal to 0.891 revolutions as our final answer.